Hi, everybody. Uh, we're really, really glad you're here today um, to join us. We're doing a couple of little talks with some, some colleagues and some folks who are content experts in a few different areas to help students really prepare to approach uh, the virtual college fair presented by the Columbia University Center for Veteran Transition and Integration on Thursday, October 28th from 3 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. I'm told that's 12 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Abby Kinch. We're so, so happy to have her with us. Um, she knows a lot about um, military inclusivity. Uh, she works in this space. She's well known in this space, but she's also done some academic work. Once Abby introduces herself, I'm gonna introduce myself and then we're gonna jump right in. Dr. Abby Kinch, good morning. Um, would you mind telling folks who are in the room a little bit more about yourself? Sure, thank you so much, RJ. Um, I'm Dr. Abby Kinch. I currently serve as the Vice President of Programs and Services at Student Veterans of America, which is a chapter-based organization. Um, it's a higher education nonprofit with uh, student organization chapters on over 1,500 campuses in all 50 states and three countries abroad. Um, my PhD I received in 2019 from Florida State University in Public Administration and Policy, where I focused on strategy. And specifically, my research had to do with the strategy of being military friendly. And so I got to uh, spend years and years exploring that, what that means, what that entails for students, for universities, for states, for you know the nation as a whole. And so I'm very excited to be here. We're so happy to have you here, Dr. Kinch. And for those of you who are listening, you can tell that we have a person in the room who really knows a lot about this, not just from working in the space with student veterans, right, but, but also real uh, sort of academic study into this area. And so I'm really excited to have you here, Dr. Kinch. Um, my name is RJ Jenkins, everybody. I'm a curriculum designer um, at the Columbia University Center for Veteran Transition and Integration, where I focus on building uh, virtual tools that help transitioning service members, active duty service members and vets optimize their academic performance in the college classroom. So I'm used to working with students once they've arrived at their right fit school. This virtual college fair is about how to get students to a right fit school. Um, and so this virtual college fair on Thursday, October 28th um, is about giving everybody an opportunity to really start these conversations with schools that they may want to explore, schools that they may want to go to. It's a two hour window um, of opportunity to learn more, to make some connections. And we want to make sure that those of you um, who are attending that event um, really have the tools you need to make the most of it. And I can tell you right now, by the way, and I think Dr. Kinch will agree with me that you watching this video now means you're halfway there, right? It means that you, you know that there are probably some things you can learn and then some tools that you can that you can obtain to make the most of that event. So, um, Dr. Kinch, um, we have these uh, these these transitioning service members, active duty service members, and and vets who are coming here because they're thinking about a next step in higher education, and maybe that's going to a college for the first time. For some folks, it may be transferring from a, a two year to a four year school, um, but they're here to try to figure out what their options might be. And one of the things that most folks are going to be thinking about in this context is, is the school that I'm talking to, is the school that I'm interested in um, a military friendly or a military inclusive school? Um, what does that even mean? Um, what does it mean for a school to be military friendly or military inclusive? Sure. Um, well, as, first of all, as a veteran myself, I served in the United States Air Force. And so I've made the same transition that all of these participants are making. Um, I started actually at a two-year school, transitioned to a four-year school, um, and then went on and on and on forever. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm familiar with the experiences and the questions and, and just the, the stress that comes with um, making that transition. And so first off, you know, I commend anyone for seeking out resources to help them make decisions that are, you know, going to impact the rest of their lives. So Thank you for being here. When we talk about um, being military friendly or veteran friendly versus inclusive, really the distinction is where, um, and I'll use the university as an example, but where the university's focus is on the student veteran. Neither of them are bad. 
Um, certainly all are beneficial to students. But when we say something is, a school is veteran friendly, what we mean is that they've got accommodations that sort of help get the veteran in the door um, and are very administrative in nature. So something like we've waived your application fees or test scores, or we're working on transfer credit or something like that. When we say military or veteran inclusive, what that means is that instead of viewing veterans as a segmented portion of the student population, we're looking at them as a whole person. Mm -hmm. And so we're really providing services, providing programs, providing policies that sort of attack the, not well, not attack, but uh, <laughs> encompass the entire college experience for veterans, but who are also other things. Right, so I'm a veteran, but I'm also a woman. Um, I'm also a Latina and I'm also, you know, I was also a graduate student or also, you know, a parent, I also work. So we have all of these things. Um, I also have a disability. And so having the, all of these resources on campus available to me as a student, not just as a veteran, is what we mean by being um, veteran inclusive. and. Additionally, offering these students a seat at the table where their experiences, not just their education, but their experiences are being um, discussed and decided so they can really sort of contribute. Additionally, and this third point is so important, veterans have this tendency to, once they get into a school, like put on these blinders and march their way from admission to graduation because it's the next thing on their to-do list and yeah. they really just want to get on in life. But there's so much more that college has to offer. And we know that for all students, participating in the college experience, however that interests you, um, and making connections on a college campus are really what fosters success. And so... When we look for schools that are military inclusive or veteran inclusive, these are schools where veterans are integrated across the board, where you see student veterans in student government, in Greek life, playing in the band, you know, participating in intramural sports, really the whole gambit, you know, in leadership in, say, um, a fraternity, sorority, in a women's student union, in a pride student union, a black student union. So across campus life, if you see veterans, you know that that campus is um, military and veteran inclusive. I think this is so, so helpful, right? Because, um, you know, and, and we're going to talk about how students can kind of get at this, but I think it's useful. Um, you know, you see these words, friendly and inclusive, almost used synonymously. And, and what you're suggesting, again, is that both of these things are good things, right? We certainly don't want to be at a school that's military not friendly or unfriendly, right? Um, and of course, no one would ever tell us that. But so when we see this language, it's good, but there is a slight distinction. And it, it sounds to me, um, Dr. Kinch, that if, if you could choose between a military-friendly school and a school that identifies as military-inclusive, that's probably the direction you would move. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, waived fees are, are nice, but that, that's not what's going to get me, um, you know, a, a better experience and, the, and a more richer, um, you know, path through graduation and into a career. Because the network that you make on campus is the network that you keep, right? So they're, they're the ones that help you get the job after college or the, the continued career after graduation, or, you know, they, that's that peer support that's so essential to, um, to succeeding. You know, it's funny when I was working at Columbia University School of General Studies um, and, and that, you know, we, we have a very large population of military connected students there. Um, dean Ahn, who was the Dean of the school for many years, he used to say this really cool thing. And, and I think this is part of what you're getting at, right? he would always acknowledge that veterans stand to be enriched by the Columbia classroom. Um, but then he would always say, and the Columbia classroom stands to be enriched by the presence of veterans. And I always thought that it's that second piece that you don't always hear. And that's sort of the difference between military friendly and military inclusive in a nutshell. Right, yeah, veteran friendly has this idea that you know, veterans need assistance making it into college and then, you know, 
Uh, it's it's sort of this deficit model of thinking and that mm. somehow we need to be filled by these things like, um, you know, uh, academic credit. While it's nice, it's not, you know, what's really going to sustain us. Um, and so where veteran inclusive, we it, it indicates that the school or the university has recognized the benefits of veterans being a, a part of the campus community instead of like sequestered in an office somewhere on campus. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, okay. So we know that we, we know that for, for folks who are listening, they, they know that the difference between these two things and they're, they're kind of armed with that vocabulary and certainly, um, you know, the schools that are going to be present at our virtual college fair, we know that these folks, um, uh, care about, care about veterans, want them to succeed uh, on their campuses. Um, and so that, that's good news. Um, but obviously there are different gradations of that. And also just because schools are different because university and college cultures are different, the ways in which schools go about this is different. And so my next question for you, Dr. Kinch is a kind of a strategy question, which is these students have about two hours in this space uh, and they may not be with us the entire two hours, but they're trying to get the absolute most out of that time from a kind of exploration perspective, from a due diligence perspective, right? There's some okay. reconnaissance that needs to go on yes. here. Um, and they're trying to figure out this is an opportunity for them to make connects and to learn more. Uh, if this is something that's really top of mind for them, and I wanna make clear, and I think you'd agree with me, Dr. Kinch, not every um, transitioning service member or veteran um, this is not the first or even the second or third concern for every vet. Just because you're a vet doesn't necessarily mean military inclusivity is at the very top of your right. list as a metric, right? It might, you know, it might be the specific program. It might be the geographic location. It might be how friendly the school is to students with families. It might be how friendly the school is to students who are working, right? Um, so, so we don't mean to suggest that this is the, the sort of top of mind thing for everybody, but in the event that a student is really interested in military inclusivity and military, uh, you know, uh, the, the sort of support structures in place for military connected students on campus, what, what kinds of things should they keep top of mind and or what should they have their eyes open for? <laughs> and or what kinds of questions might they ask? I know that's sort of a tripartite question, but just trying to give folks some tools about how they might go about being better explorers of this topic during this two hour window. Absolutely. I wanna preface my answer by saying that in generally speaking, if, if, a, if a, a campus looks to be, or has you know, the components that we know to be military inclusive, they are more inclusive to all needs and all populations of students. So if your biggest concern is being a parent, if they're inclusive to veterans, they're going to be inclusive to parents. They're mm -hmm. gonna try and get parents involved somehow and children involved somehow. Students with disabilities, the same thing. They're gonna be more open to, to just not the prototypical college student, right? So it's an indicator, so a good thing to keep in mind. But when we talk about looking for things, you know, um, that, that would make a campus more veteran inclusive or military inclusive are things like I, I'm, some sh shameless self-promotion, um, an SVA chapter, a chapter yeah. of Student Veterans of America. Um, because what we do as an organization is we act as peer support for one another across varying campuses, um, but we really act you know, help our chapters and our chapters help themselves. They advocate for themselves on campus and they they create seats at the table for veterans and, and they create these connections and these interactions and relationships with all parts of the university. Um, and so we, we were, where we've got well-established chapters like at Columbia, um, we see really um, an inclusive environment where those students can be involved in anything. If it's, you know, you wanna be involved in a business organization, that's awesome. If you wanna LARP on a field somewhere, that's amazing. And, <laughs> you know, they're really sort of embraced that way. So chapters one for some, for some self-promotion for SVA, but also, you know, <laughs> It's really up to you, right? So it's up to the student to, to, to ask the questions and to look for those things that matter most. So student veterans are, are more likely to 
um, be a racial and ethnic minority. They're more likely to have a disability. They're more likely to have spouses and have dependents. And those parents are more likely to be single parents. And so we have a whole host of concerns. And so what I always recommend is that veterans, when they're looking at universities to attend and when they're looking at colleges, there are always the typical things, you know, look for the college um, and for the major and for the program that's going to best suit your needs academically. But in support of those, make a list of things that you need. If yeah. you're a parent, you may need childcare on campus. You may need after hours childcare available. You may need, um, you know, medical um, insurance available for your children through the university if you don't have it through, you know, the, the VA or, or any other means, right? So we've got all of these concerns to make a list and yeah. don't, and, and, <laughs> There are no off-limit questions for anyone. Um, ask everyone and anyone you meet at a school about these questions because you never know who may be connected to whom on a campus, right? So if you ask, um, if you're interested in anthropology and you go and speak to that department and you're talking to an advisor, but you have children, um, you can say, hey, I have kids. I'm wondering about the childcare situation on campus. If they don't have kids, they may say, oh, that's a good question. Let me connect you with the child care offices if there is one. They may also have kids, though, and they may say, oh, my gosh, it's great. You know, <laughs> the classroom sizes are small. It's super close. They're very flexible with whatever. They offer discounts mm -hmm. if you are receiving a Pell Grant or if you're on financial aid or something. So they may have all those answers. Similarly, don't be afraid to just go outside into the university to, to see where those services exist and to ask questions of the services that you may need. Things like a career center. Ask the career center if they're familiar with a veteran resume, if they're familiar with translating what we did in the military into something that applies to a civilian um, career. Uh, the Disability Resource Center is one that is so underutilized by student veterans who are more likely to have disabilities and who may need accommodations. I, three out of four degrees I did without any accommodations and I suffered for it. And when I finally realized that, hey, I'm allowed to use that resource too, you know, I flourished. And so I should have asked the question right off the bat. I should have said, hey, this is a problem for me. How do I get help? But I never did. And that, you know, was to my detriment. And so any questions that you may have, you know, if you struggle with memory or, you know, you have a physical disability or an emotional or, you know, cognitive disability, take those to the Disability Resource Center and take those to your pro program that you, you're looking at that you like to apply to and say, hey, this is me. How do I succeed in your program? And that's regardless of your need. That is anything you may think of. But what I highly recommend is making a list, right? Think of the last time you were in school, which may be in high school, um, maybe some college, maybe some online school while you were serving, really any of those things, think through the process. Um, and then what, what might be your questions? And then finally, I might say, reach out to, if there's an SVA chapter on the school, reach out to that chapter and ask questions. Say, hey, how are you liking it there? What's your experience been? What sort of other things are you doing? You know, is there an opportunity to do this? If you want to study abroad, right? Does the school have an amazing study abroad program? Um, I got to spend a semester in China and it was amazing and, and I had a blast. But, you know, it's because I looked for those experiences and asked those questions and found out that, yes, the GI Bill does pay for study abroad. Um, and so really just knowing, thinking about what you'd like to do, thinking about the, the hurdles that might be in the way, and then just asking everyone. No question is off limits. I really appreciate that feedback. And, you know, it, it occurs to me as you're talking, um, you know, one of the things that I really want to dispossess students of in advance of this event, right? A virtual college fair or an in-person college fair uh, is not an admissions interview, right? I think that students really need to, to free themselves from any anxiety they might have 
around being evaluated in this context or being assessed in this context. If anything, it's the schools and the admissions professionals who are being evaluated and assessed at this moment, right? This is the student's opportunity to really try to figure out, and it's not about grilling people, right? It's not about teaching anyone anything. It's really about good faith exploration. Let me get as much information as I can. Um, let me make this connect, make sure that the school has my information. And the moment for the admissions interview will come later, right? But I think to your point around not being afraid to ask questions, it's really related to this notion that in this moment, the student really does need to, uh, to get answers to the questions that they have. And now's the perfect time to do that. Exactly. Yes. And also just understand that those admissions officers want you at that school just as much as you want to be at that school. And so it's really just, um, you know, like, like a job, it's, it's really just figuring out if that's going to be a good long-term fit because you could spend anywhere from two to five years at the same institution and really understanding how that relationship is going to work. Um, you know, if they're able to support you in the way that you need supported, it's it's all um, you know incredibly important, and these conversations they're just conversations. And if anything, even if this was an admissions interview, asking questions shows that you've done your homework, that you know who you are, right. that you're ready to advocate for yourself, that you're re you're passionate about succeeding. And so there's never anything wrong with asking questions like this to um, to anyone anywhere. I, I, I agree completely. Um, and it, and I have one more question for you, Dr. Kinch, and then I'll let you get on with your day. But um, it, it is important, you know, for participants here who are thinking about this two hour window and thinking, how am I going to talk to everyone I need to talk to, right? This is the very, very first step of a much larger due diligence process for folks. So don't feel like you need to get every question in uh, in this moment that you need to walk away with all of your information, not at all, right? Wow. Make sure that you get a person's contact information, make sure that they get your contact information, find out whether or not there's an SVA chapter on campus. I can't stress this enough. And Dr. Kinch is absolutely right. That's an entirely different resource and an incredibly valuable one because um, you're not gonna be surprised when I say this. <laughs> But the, the perspective of folks who are doing the thing that you're trying to do uh, is invaluable, right? Um, it's incredibly important to hear from the folks who are on the ground, who are studying there, who are part of the current veteran or military connected population. And so getting that information and continuing these conversations during this event are, are the very beginning um, of, of other conversations that hopefully you'll have. Last question, Dr. Kinch. Um, we said that not for not every student um, is going to be primarily or even secondarily concerned with a robust uh, veteran population on campus necessarily. Right. Um, but I have seen in my own work uh, that that a that a that a robust and active um, veteran population on campus, whether or not a vet thinks they want to be in the middle of that or not. I've seen vets help other vets over and over and over again as yeah. part of this process. So um, I'm not saying it needs to be the most important or second most important thing, but I want to end this conversation with a little plug for folks. Um, what, what do you think the real benefits are for a student who's trying to think about all of these different factors? Um, why is it important that this should be part of their calculus? Sure. So I was not interested when I went to school in being at all connected to the veterans on campus. I was that person with the blinders on. I also wasn't like I didn't tell people I was a veteran. I didn't, you know, wear the hats or or <laughs> park in the parking spaces. Um, I have a license plate, but that's more so I don't really get pulled over. But <laughs> I want to say that, you know, Regardless, what well, first, what we see often is that people like me who had no intention of doing it at first, after about the first and second semester, you really start looking for those connections. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you're not engaging with other students immediately off the bat, you really start to feel isolated. And you revert to that last thing that you did, which was serving in the military, and you, you start to look for people who have those shared experiences. 
it's not, you know, it's not a basic thing that everyone goes through, but we've seen it again and again. And then those people, you know, come back. I wish I'd been a part of this from the beginning. And it's mm-hmm. totally fine if you're not. But even if you never engage with the other veterans on campus, even if, you know, you're you're totally fine, you make friends elsewhere, um, you will always benefit because you're a veteran from the chapter on your campus um, or from the, the military inclusiveness on your campus. And I say that because, you know, you may be using the GI Bill and students who are also using the GI Bill, who are advocating for best practices in administering the GI Bill on your campus, that's gonna impact you. Yeah. Or in my instance, um, we were, the, the, the student veterans, I was not a part of this, like the, the original plan here, but the student veterans on my campus had gotten um, priority registration implemented for all student veterans, which impacted me greatly. And that was the footwork that they had done. Later on, I was part of a group who put together, um, before it was cool and the entire nation did it, the in-state tuition for veterans in Florida, right? So people who were not participating in the chapter were still benefiting by getting in-state tuition, um, even if they hadn't previously lived in Florida. And, the, you know, I can go on and on. There are other programs that, that we had we had gotten passed or we had implemented or advocated for. Um, even, you know, we got free tickets to a football game or not. Well, they're always free because student tickets were free, but like free good tickets to a football <laughs> game. <laughs> not in the student section um, for uh, a military appreciation football game. And so we saw a host of student veterans that we had never seen before. And that's OK they still benefited from having access to those tickets. They could bring their families, they could have a fun day um, and, you know, have their service be recognized. They didn't have to participate with the chapter, but having that chapter on the campus or or having the campus be a military or veteran inclusive afforded them that really fun experience that they got to have, um, you know, on that day. And so it's, it's sort of the little things, right? Um, You're not going to notice it if you don't have it. But if you do have it, it will be extremely impactful and improving the quality of your experience, not just your education, but the entire experience in college and and at a university. And you will also be plugged in, and and I've seen this happen over and over again, but that next transition, which is the transition out of school and into the civilian workforce, there are tremendous benefits (laughs) to being plugged in, in my experience, Um, watching students really lift each other up in that process. And so folks who have built those connections over time, even if even if the military organization on campus or the student veteran group on campus wasn't their primary affiliation, having those relationships turns out to be very beneficial even beyond the college moment. Right. Well, and I can shameless uh, plug something else is we have um, Student Veterans of America every year hosts a national conference um, and, and in January 6th through 8th, it's going to be hosted at um, Walt Disney World. And one of the components of this national conference is a huge room just packed with corporate partners, with nonprofit partners, with government partners, all looking to hire student veterans, hire their families, and, and hire our chapter leaders. That's the sole reason that they come. I mean, it's a great time and obviously who can say no to Disney World, but they come with a specific intent to hire people. And I've seen year after year after year of people get these incredible jobs at these incredible companies like Raytheon Technologies, like Google, like Disney, like Comcast, NBC Universal, Boeing, Lock. I could go on and on and on. Um, but they they get these opportunities because they're involved with the with the chapter on campus, and so they get to go to the national conference, and they get access to these people, and they can spend three days with somebody at Accenture and and walk away with a job before graduation at Accenture, and it's just incredible that the way the way that 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 works just because you joined a, a club on campus. So Dr. Kinch, we're going to have these students come to our virtual college fair on Thursday, October 28th from three o'clock to five o'clock Eastern. And then we're going to get them registered to come see you and me both 
in Orlando because Dr. Kinch yes. and I will both be in Orlando. Um, actually, we both live fairly close to Orlando, so we're going to be yep. able to get in the car and get down there. Dr. Kinch, if folks are interested in the event that you've just described, how do they get more information? Absolutely. So you can visit NATCON, that's what we call the National Conference, N-A-T-C-O-N dot studentveterans dot org. Um, so NATCON dot studentveterans dot org. It has all of the information and actually registration for the conference is going to open on Monday. And that's Monday, October, because I'm 11th. not sure when. So okay. it'll be open by the time students are seeing this. Exactly. So y'all will be able to, because if you're watching this, that means you, you've probably already registered for our virtual college fair, but definitely connect with SVA through NatCon. And definitely once you start talking to these schools in our virtual college fair, find out whether or not there's an SVA chapter and get in touch with some folks who are doing the things that you want to do on the campuses that you're interested in. Dr. Kinch, you are a delight. Oh, you are a delight. I'm <laughs> it's so, so happy nice to talk here. to you. Um, thank you for your, your your the gift of your time and your expertise here. We really appreciate it. And on behalf of all of the participants, I just wanted to say we appreciate you. Thank you. I'm in love with everyone at CVTI. You all do incredible work that just supports what we do. And it's such a great partnership. And I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, again, virtual college fair, Thursday, October 28th, three to five. We look forward to seeing all of you. Thank you for plugging in to listen to this. You'll also find another asset on the landing page that helps you think a little bit more about the strategy on the day, how to actually approach these schools, what, how, how many you might think about approaching and how to think about how to prioritize your time during those two hours. So make sure to check that out as well. Thank you for your time, attention and care, and we'll see you on the 28th.